Today we study patterns in lists of numbers. Suppose that you have a round, flat cake. This is a mathematical cake, completely flat, not a real cake. With one straight cut, you can cut the cake into two pieces. One, two pieces, with a single cut. What is the maximum number of pieces you can get with two straight cuts? So I drew a picture of it here. Two straight cuts. I'm not trying to make equal pieces, just the maximum number of pieces. So I've got one, two, three, four pieces of cake with two cuts. What if I make three cuts? Again, I'm trying to maximize the number of pieces. So rather than um, going right through this center point when I put in my third cut, I'm going to move it over a little bit so that I have more pieces of cake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of cake with three straight cuts. If I make four straight cuts, like in this last picture, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pieces of cake. So let's fill in the table here. If I make zero cuts, you have one large piece of cake. One cut, two pieces of cake. Two cuts, four pieces of cake. Three cuts made seven pieces of cake, and four cuts made 11 pieces of cake. So let's see if we can guess, um, see if we can find a pattern to go up to larger numbers of cuts. So some of you may notice a pattern um, where you are adding 1 plus what gives you 2 plus 1. 2 plus what gives you 4 plus 2. 4 plus what gives you 7 plus 3. 7 plus what gives you 11 plus 4. Okay. So what do, what do you think I'm going to add to 11 to get my next uh, number of pieces? Right, 5. five. So 11 plus 5 gives me 16. And then to that 16, I'm going to add 6. 16 plus 6 is 22. And then to the 22, I'm going to add 7. 22 plus 7 is 29. And then I add 8. 29 plus 8 is 37. 37 plus 9 is 46. And 46 plus 10 is 56. A sequence is just a list of numbers. It can be finite, 2, 7, and 20, or it can be infinite, like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, etc. The numbers in the list can be totally random, like in the first example, 2, 7, 20, or they can have a pattern, like in the second example, 2, 4, 6, 8, which was the even numbers. So we're going to start with a little notation. We usually name a sequence with a letter. Um, for example, we could name the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. with the letter A. So now you have capital A is equal to the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, on and on and on. You name the terms of the sequence using the A with a subscript, which is a little, little number on the lower right corner. The subscript tells us where in the sequence to look. So if I asked you what A sub 3 is, you would answer 6, because 6 is the third number in the sequence A. So A sub 3 means the number in the third location of sequence A. So this is A1, this is A2, this is A3. So what is A5? Well, 8 is A4, and the fifth number in the sequence is 10. So A5 is 10. All right, I'm going to try to look at the pattern in this sequence a couple of different ways here. So first, um, A2, which is 4, is equal to A1, which is 2, plus how many? 2, right. So A2 is A1 plus 2. A3, which is 6, is equal to A2, which is 4, plus how much? A4, which is 8, is equal to A3, which is 6, plus how much? 8 is equal to 6 plus 2. 
So A5 is equal to A4 plus 2. Yeah, so each number in the list is equal to the number before it plus 2. A5 is equal to A4 plus 2. So I'm going to generalize what I've been writing here. So A sub n is equal to the number in the list right before it plus 2. The notation that represents the number in the list before a sub n is I just have to subtract 1 from the n, right? So I had 5, and then I had 4. This one was a 4, and then it equaled a 3 plus 2. a 3 is a 2 plus 2, and a 2 is a 1 plus 2. So these subscripts are related in that you just subtract 1. So if I subtract 1 from n, that is just a sub n minus 1. And that's called a recursive rule for a sequence. You call a rule recursive if it uses previous terms of the sequence to calculate the current term. So the a sub n minus 1 is a previous term from the sequence. All right, so here's another way to think about the pattern in 2, 4, 6, 8. To get a1, which is 2, you multiply 2 times what? 1, right? So a1 is 2 times 1. a2, which is the set, means the second number in the list, so that's 4, is 2 times what? 2. So a2 is 2 times 2. a3, the third number in the list is 6, is 2 times what? 3. A3 is 2 times 3. So let me just say this out loud again. A1 is 2 times 1. A2 is 2 times 2. A3 is 2 times 3. A4 is 2 times 4. AN is 2 times N. So we call this last one an explicit rule for the sequence. You call a rule explicit. If all you need to calculate the nth term of the sequence is the value of n, you don't need any of the previous terms in the sequence to calculate the current term. I could calculate the 100th term of this sequence, a100, right? It's just 2 times 100, right? So 200 would be the 100th term in that sequence. I do not need to know the 99th term in order to get the 100th term. That's the difference between recursive and explicit. For recursive, I would have needed to know the 99th term. For explicit, I don't. All right, let's play a little game of guess my rule. So I've got n, s sub n. I'd like to know what s sub 5 is. So where I've got this question mark, what should go there? So my sequence, s sub n, goes 1 and a half, 3, 4 and a half, 6. Those numbers are increasing by one and a half. One and a half plus three plus one and a half is three. Three plus one and a half is four and a half. Four and a half plus one and a half is six. Six plus one and a half is <clears throat> seven and a half. All right, what about S sub zero? That would be what came before the one and a half. So to move forwards in the list, I was adding one and a half. So to move backwards in the list, I have to subtract one and a half. So go back one more from here. One and a half minus one and a half is zero. A recursive rule for s sub n. So I would say, okay, well, s sub n is equal to the number right before it plus one and a half. Now the notation for the number before s sub n, remember you just have to subtract one from the subscript to be, do the one before it. So this is going to be s sub n minus one. So the nth term in the list is the one right before it, plus one and a half. Now an explicit rule for s sub n is a little bit harder because I'm not allowed to use that one and a half. Um, oh, that's not quite true. Okay, so s sub n is going to be equal to, I'm adding one and a half over and over and over again, right? As I move down the list, I keep adding one and a half. 1 and a half plus 1 and a half is 3, plus 1 and a half is 4 and a half, plus 1 and a half is 6, plus 1 and a half is 7 and a half. So I'm repeatedly adding 1 and a half. So my first number in the list um, was 0, s sub 0 is 0, 
and then I'm adding one and a half over and over again. And repeated addition is actually multiplication. So F sub n is one and a half times n. So let's just check if that works. Let's check um, S sub 3. That should be 1.5 times 3. 1 and a half times 3 is 4 and a half. And that is S sub 3, 4 and a half. So our rule checks out. S is a special kind of sequence, a sequence where the rule to get from one term to the next is to add or subtract a constant is called an arithmetic sequence. Another game of guess my rule. I want to know g5 and g sub 0. So here you might notice that the pattern to get from one term to the next is that we're doubling. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. So 40 times 2 would be 80. And then g sub 0, I need to go backwards in the list. So if to go forwards, I'm multiplying by 2, then to go backwards, I'm dividing by 2, right? 80 divided by 2 gives me 40. 40 divided by 2 gives me 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And 5 divided by 2 would be 2 and a half. So a recursive rule for G would be, in English, I would say, well, each term in the list is the term before it times 2. So g sub n, the nth term in the list, is equal to the term right before it, which we denote g sub n minus 1, the term right before the nth term, times 2. Now, an explicit rule for g means I'm not allowed to use g sub n minus 1. I'm only allowed to use n in my formula. So g sub n equals, and I'm going to build this by repeated multiplication. Okay, so I'm going to start with my 2 and a half, start with my 2 and a half, and I'm multiplying by 2 over and over and over again, right? So I'm going to multiply by 2 over and over and over again, and repeated multiplication is denoted with an exponent. So I get g sub n is 2 and a half times 2 to the n. And then I should check what I wrote down for my formula, right? I should check, say, g sub 4. That should be 2.5 times 2 to the 4th. Okay, so 2 to the 4th, that means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's um, 16. Yeah, 2 times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. Okay, so 2 to the 4th is... 32. Just double checking on my calculator here. 2 to the 4th. Oh, no, it's 16. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Okay, so this is 2.5 times 16, which is 40, right? And that is the fourth number in the list. That is g sub 4. So our formula checks out. It's a good habit when you're learning to first write formulas to check a couple. Make sure that your formula actually gives you the correct number in the list. So this, this sequence G, it's a special kind of sequence. Um, any sequence where the rule to get from one term to the next is to multiply or divide by a constant is called the geometric sequence. All right, so I'm going to have you... Um, Pause here, work on your activities, check your answers as you go through the activities, um, and let me know if you have any questions.